Greetings and welcome to Yes the Stripper Podcast. Today's episode, I chat with the honey badger of burlesque, G's Louise. I am your Hopra, Gigi Holiday. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Yes the Stripper Podcast. Yes, I am your Hopra, Gigi Holiday. And I am thrilled to be introducing and interviewing our guest today. Listen, I'm going to just say this right now. I have been friends with them for years. We met at Burley Con, which is a burlesque conference, and smoked weed out of an apple in a hotel room <laughs> after hanging out with burlesque legend Lottie the Body. <laughs> And it has been an amazing friendship since. Please welcome number one burlesque entertainer of 2019 and 2020. And now number three uh, burlesque entertainer for, for 2021. Give it up for G's Louise. Hey, what up? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> hey, I'm out here. I'm here. Hey, I love it. I am so happy that you're here, especially. Yes, thank you for having me. Like, you. Especially been a week. It has been a week. Whirlwind. It, is, it has been a week. We're having yeah. a little technical difficulties with your video. What's good? What's going on with this video? With it's my good. video? Yeah. It's uh, not working? It's being all like. Nah, 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 nah. I'm gonna go. Okay. Don't worry, all this can be edited. Okay, I'm gonna try to go out in the kitchen and see. This is bad because sometimes my internet's a little wonky. Then y'all get to see my seasoning. No, one's, no one's seeing the mess that's behind me. Remember, I just I just is moved here 19 better? weeks ago. Is it better now? Yes. Okay, great. All righty. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> uh, thank you for having me. No, I'm so excited that you're here. We've had like a monumental day yesterday, mm. you and I, um, for our listeners and viewers, the that top 50 burlesque list of 2021 came out yesterday. And I, along with G's, is in the top. We are in the top 10. Top 10. And G's is in the top three. I've been holding on strong for like seven years. I'm shocked. I am not. I'm shocked. I am not. And you I'm. You never know. You never know. You're, that's true. You never know. You really, really never know. Because I used to be like, oh my God, like, strong, oh my God. And now I'm just like, whatever. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully I get to that point because I was getting like shaky. Yeah. I was just I like, know. you were like, I need to know. I need to know. I need to know. And it's just the Aries in me that lacks patience. Oh, oh yeah. You're very Aries. And I'm just like, just tell me right now. Just tell me the answer right now. Like why I gotta wait for everybody else. Like it's also that the entitlement of why I, why do I have to wait? As an Aries, like why I gotta wait. Everybody else can wait, That's not me. Save the best for last. Save the best for last. And I have to remind myself that. But I did remind myself this year. I said, you will not find out in the first few days. I told myself that. Mm -hmm. Please know, you will not find out in the, in the first few days. Yeah. You will wait. Yeah. And, exactly. you know, adult me is like, higher self me is like, yes, I will wait. And you're like, refresh. Yes, shadow self is, we need to know now. He's not refreshing. <laughs> Refreshing, undo cookies, clear history, cache, <laughs> clear the cache, clear it out. Oh my goodness! So, geez, please tell the audience your origin story. How did Geez Louise come to be? Crazy, because I was wow. It's been thirteen years. This March will be my thirteenth birthday which is wild because i really did not expect to be doing burlesque this long uh, uh oh it's the sound is acting up again jeez <laughs> what? 
Okay. Yeah, it's all like a robot. Okay. Oh my gosh, what is happening? It's not you, it's... Um, if we can't get the internet to work, sometimes switching from a laptop to a phone can work. I know that would sort of uh, upend everything we're doing, but sometimes that's a little so suitable. Okay. Hold on. It's... You're muted. Okay, I'm back. Yeah. Apparently our internet being really shit today. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry. No well, worries. They only, they only give us one option. What, in New Orleans, they only give you one option for internet? Have, like Cox and then it. Yeah, that's how it is in DC. They only give you Xfinity and then yeah. now they have RS, RCN. But it's just like RCN isn't that, that great because Xfinity has taken over everything. Exactly. So we got shitty ass cocks. Yeah. But I think now that I'm closer to the whatever it's called. The router. I think it'll be better now. But just look, I'm gonna turn the original sound back on. Okay. Jesus Christ. Okay. I know. Technology. Listen, I'm just glad we recorded on a day that my landlord did not decide that he, because he lives above me, decided that it was time to work on his kitchen. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ain't nothing like waking up here and banging. You're just like, what the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> yeah. no, I know. I was like, you could have warned somebody, my guy. Yeah, get the heads up. He admitted. He forgot. He admitted. He's, he's my old man. That's what I call him all the time, my old man. Hey. Okay. Start talking and we'll see. Hey, I hope my internet works. It's no, it's not even. Our infrastructure is terrible. <laughs> no way. The internet, it's, it will not. <laughs> okay, if you would like to sound like a robot perfect but if you'd like to sound like a person <laughs> it's not quite working <laughs> i'm gonna try it on and see okay that'll be better this is fine all of this can be edited i'm not tripping and we can also reschedule if you need to if you want to be in a place with better internet or if you yeah. know it's working that day can i try to join on the phone and not be on the internet okay Recording in progress. I'm going to leave the other one. Okay. Jesus Christ. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. I'm not going to keep talking. Blah, blah, blah. I'm Jeezy. Yad Dudi. Crystal clear. Crystal. Fabulous. Okay, All right. Great. So let's just Fuck take it. it. Let's just take it from the beginning then. So that we don't have any issues. So the little white lady already said we recorded in progress. Bye, bye, bye. All righty. <clears throat> Three, two. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Yes, a Stripper podcast. I am your Hopra, Gigi Holiday, and I am excited about our guest today. Let me tell you something about our guest. I met them years ago we've been friends for years met them at burley con where we ended up smoking weed out of an apple in a hotel room after hanging out with burlesque legend lottie the body i am pleased to bring to you number one burlesque performer for 2019 and 2020 and now number three for 2021 the one, the only, the incomparable, Jeez Louise. Hey. Hey, jeans. Blah, 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 blah. Oh my gosh. I'm hey, just, Gigi. hi, baby. Oh, 
it's been too long. I'm happy. I'm yeah. happy to have you. I'm happy to have you. Please, yeah. please stay, stay as long as possible. Uh, <laughs> so tell me, tell me your origin story. How did you begin? How did Jeez Louise begin? Well, I was a young musical theater girl, just trying to make my way to Broadway. I wanted to be a choreographer for Broadway. And I was in school for musical theater. And that's where, when I started uh, stripping at the strip club, because somebody had to pay for that. And it wasn't anyone that I knew. So I was working as a stripper. And I had a friend of mine that was in a burlesque troupe. This was like, remember when theater companies were like, we can do burlesque for our yearly fundraiser. Grab yes. your black said, let's go. Like there was a lot of that going on around 2008, 2009. People just use them burlesque for their little fundraisers. And so a friend of mine was in a troupe that had grew out of that. And me and Tito Bonito and Pocha before they were those people, we used to go and support. And I was like, let me choreograph your dances. Like, please let me choreograph. And then somebody dropped out and they were like, oh, Jeezy's a stripper. She'll probably do it. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'll do it. I had like a week to get it together. I definitely wore my homecoming dress. I did a song that was like two and a half minutes long. I almost fell off the stage. And I was like, yeah, this is my new life now. This I time. love I love how you <laughs> just like this old prom dress and me falling off the stage will not stop me. <laughs> Wig was shifted wig was turned all the way around i don't even know what i did i'm pretty sure the underwear i wore was what i wore to the venue that day like there was no there was no preparation or planning happening we all got to start somewhere and yeah. I <laughs> there, was no videos. there was no like school i just was like i don't know I'm just going to figure it out, watch what everybody else is doing. But then I literally have not stopped doing it since that day, 13 years ago, which is crazy to me. 13 years ago? Yeah, it took over my life. <laughs> I mean, I can't say nothing. It took over mine, I, too. It took over. I was like, what was I doing? Who was I before? What happened? What's going on? I mean, even when I was a preschool teacher and I would be like, yes, I am a teacher. And then three o'clock hit, I would be like, fuck them kids. I'm about to go show my no. titty. Fuck out of here. <laughs> fuck these goddamn yeah, children. I was a lot. I used to teach children a lot. And I used to work at this school, like this after school program for years. And then when I moved back to St. Louis and audition or interviewed there, they wouldn't hire me back because of the burlesque. Really? And I was like, I'm not going to be booty popping with your fucking kids. Like, we could do a shuffle ball change. Like, I don't <laughs> understand, you know? Mind you, they use my performance stuff for the aftercare and all the schools I work for to their benefits. They was like, she can go talk in front of people and create a dance for the kids for their graduation. Uh -huh. Interesting. They was literally, <laughs> but here's the thing. They realized that when they hired me, they had no choice. They were just like, oh, we hired a burlesque dancer. And I was like, what do yeah. you want? If that would have happened today, oh, I definitely would have like fought it. Yeah. And, like think about it. But at that point, I was like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Fuck <laughs> gonna... these kids, I don't care. How did you come up with your name? I love this question because I feel like Jeez Louise is a nickname for Jeezy rather than Jeezy being a nickname for Jeezy. Because when I was in high school, I mean, my two best friends, they were gonna have a talent show at school. And we were like, no one's rapping and tapping at the same time. Like who's the doing rap that? Tap. Come on, rap tap. Yeah, I mean, we were like, who's rapping and tapping? Nobody, okay? <laughs> so we were like, this one be our thing. We're gonna be J squared. And she was Jay Jigga, which is hilarious and problematic because she's definitely white. And I, <laughs> I was Jay Jeezy. And so we made these airbrush t-shirts that had like Jay Jeezy on the back. And like we wore them everywhere. So people just started calling me Jeezy. 
And then when I went to college, that's when Facebook started. It was like, I was on the first year of Facebook and I just made my Facebook name, uh, Jeezy, McNeezy. And so everyone just started calling me Jeezy. And I was like, you know, if I ever needed a stage name, I would probably use Jeez Louise. And then one day I needed a stage name. And I was like, oh, great. I already got it. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love so like, it. I was like, it's literally been my nickname for like 20 years at this point. And I love it. It's funny because when people are like, hey, Louise, I'm like, who is, who are you talking to? Who is that? I don't know. No, that does not feel. And I know why they say it because to them, it feels weird to say G's or Jeezy, but Louise does not. It doesn't. That is, it doesn't no, that, off the tongue. Oh, no, that does not. I love that name, but I do not respond to that whatsoever. Listen, I, G's, G's Louise. I just like, yeah. you know, where G's yet? He's <laughs> saying Louise, G's Louisiana. <laughs> I kind of like G's Louisiana. I like G's Louisiana too. G's Louisiana. I may give you a, one of the things that I like to do in my free time with Lottie Ellington is uh -huh. give performers Southern mi uh, middle names. Ooh. I'll be like Lottie Cl Claritha Ellington. Ooh. Get I your. <laughs> I love, yeah, I love making, giving people nicknames this longer. Yeah. <laughs> like bazooka joe is bazooka tifa josephine <laughs> ray gun is raymundo gunnison oh my goodness mm -hmm. oh my god speaking of ray gun and i know in you i forgot to tell you this i'm in the dirty show <gasps> yeah both weekends no just the 18th and 19th yay I'll be there. <laughs> Oh, that's so exciting. No. I remember uh, Ray said you're going to be there. Yeah. Uh, when we went to go see Mama Tony. And so that's why I was just like, oh, oh. shit. So, you know, uh, Mama how should I put this? I already know it's about to be a wild weekend. Wild. I'm so excited. Yay. That makes me so happy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. The moment I found out, I was like, yes. I get to be with G's Louise and hopefully we can go see Mama Tony all the time. Yeah, because she's been asking me all yeah. the time. Oh my goodness. So the other question I would like to ask is, geez, why are you so goddamn good? How does it feel to be one of God's favorites? Uh <laughs> Arts, pressure, a lot of pressure. <laughs> the reason the reason I ask that because you you seem so special to me and I'm always shocked that you're my friend and you talk and you text me and call me I'm always weirded out don't worry it's the neurodivergency of my brain of just like I have friends like <laughs> like I have friends um I love you so but yeah but uh sorry someone just sent me something uh Honestly, I have been performing basically since I was born. You know, I started, my grandma put me in dance class when I was five. And I remember, like, I have a very vivid memory of leaving, like, the first week of dance class and being like, this is what I want to do forever. And I really just was focusing on dancing my entire life until I got to middle school and was like, oh, you could do theater, music. I found about musical theater, you can combine like acting, dance, singing all together. And that's just the only thing that I've ever wanted to do for my entire life. But luckily I grew up with an extremely supportive family who was like, yes, we'll get you to the dance classes, whatever you need. Like they were just extremely supportive of that dream. Even knowing that it was gonna be hard, you know, for an artist's life, but they still, like cultivated that passion. So I'm very fortunate that I was able to have that support, you know? And what I, yeah, cause that's, you know, you and I know that's a rarity in the black community that we get support for our art. And sometimes we don't get the support until the end. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. fact that your family has been in it like all right this is what you want to do bet let's do it not only that your mama and grandmama be coming to burlesque shows i will never forget oh, when your grandmother 
Yeah, your whole family. I would never forget. Yes, your uncle was supposed to take me to go get some ribs. I remember your uncle was supposed to take me to go get some ribs because I said, I'm, I'm from D.C. I ain't never been to St. Louis. Let me get some ribs. And he stood up and was like, I'm going to take you to get some ribs. <laughs> your grandmother slapped my ass. Not once, but twice. So you have a yeah, very... Uh, holding brick house's titties. There's and a picture of what? <laughs> um, holding brick house's titties like this. <laughs> my mama was holding brick house's titties, of course. Yeah, and they're like prom pose, and she's just like holding on to brick house titties like that. <laughs> I fucking love it. But like your yeah. family, I think that support really shows in your work. And what you do, it's one of those things like kind of like a drug dealer. I'm out here for my family because your family is really supporting <laughs> you. And like, <laughs> yeah, um, it's like, I question a lot of people don't, you know, there, it breaks my heart that there's people that can't even like tell their family or anybody that this is a huge part of their lives, you know? That's so, like, I can't imagine I have so much empathy for those people. Yeah, I have to agree. My mom and sister come to my shows, especially mm -hmm. my mom. My mom loves coming to burlesque shows. My mom and sister actually saw you in D.C. And my yes. sister till this day says, geez, Louise is burlesque. Like that, that was a burlesque act. Aww, I love yeah, I'm that. not my sister's. I'm not my sister's favorite. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, I'm not everybody's favorite either. You know, I'm, I mean, I, it's it's weird that I am not my I'm own. Blood sister's favorite. Her favorite yeah. is Ava Mystique. How dare. I mean, but also. Yes. But I, I think it's because they're both Libras. And so they're both their birthdays are, are like right next to each other. So I, that's what I think it is. Sometimes you know how family is sometimes. They're like, they can't be giving you too much. You know, they still gotta let make you work for it a little bit. Yes. I told my mom that I was number 10 in the world. And I said, when I come home, will you spoil me? She says, absolutely not. I said, no, you she still know. No. That's how <laughs> she said, said no. she said, you're here to spoil me. Oh. Dang. One time, so my grandma should, who passed a few years ago. I was like, oh, I'm going to, you know, Viva Las Vegas. This was like years ago. And she was like, oh, who's Miss Viva Las Vegas? Pearl Noir? And I was like, it's me. <laughs> I miss me. But she was like, oh, is it Pearl? I was like, you know what? Wow, family, y'all room. <laughs> know who that is. <laughs> like, what? Why do you even know Pearl? What's going on? <laughs> family is rude. Family oh, is like, wow. <laughs> I, when my sister told me that she loved Ava Mystique and I was just like yeah she's a great performer and I was like Trina do you think I'm good she goes it's just that Ava Mystique and I was like bro <laughs> you shouldn't have asked Nathan You're right but mind you she her and my mom love coming to my shows and saying that they are mother and sister holiday and that oh. you will give us <laughs> to where Abby, I'm like I'm a, she'd be going this is how she walk into the box she'd be like I'm Jesus Louise's grandmother. I'm Jesus' grandmother. I'm here. Where's my seat? I've arrived. It's <laughs> just, it's just the support of it all. And we appreciate the support, but oh, we'd be wow. like, what did I tell like, my mom? You are not <laughs> Tina Knowles. I tell my mother, you are not Tina Knowles. Please stop. Sure. I miss you, Tina. You're not Miss Tina. Outfits or something. <laughs> yeah. I need some House of Darion cutouts. <laughs> <laughs> Not House of Darion. Remember when they had a home section of House of Darion? Like you can get a House yeah, of Darion comforter. They still have it at City Trends, okay? City Trends still has Echo Red, okay? And House of Darion and Baby Fat. I don't know if this is new production or if this is just old stuff they still have. But you go to City Trends, you can get an Echo Red shirt today. You know what? I think I'm going to do that because when you walk down the streets of Brooklyn, they are still playing music from the early 2000s. It's like Jay-Z 
Boo-boo Jay-Z has that. never left. It's boo-boo. We need it. Boo-boo. Give me some boo-boo. <laughs> Give me that for us, by us. <laughs> for us, by us. That's going to be my burlesque. Boo-boo burlesque. For, for us, by us. That's what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> no. So one of the things that always attracted me to you, not only your stunning good looks, and your twerking ability is your outspokenness of issues in not only the burlesque community, but in the world. Like you be going in on people and I appreciate it. I love finding the other loud motherfucker in the room who is ready to cut somebody out or tell somebody about themselves, about any fuck shit they doing. And I've been telling people, and now it's 2021, you lucky Jeezy09 is now logging on. GZ 2013, 14, 15, all y'all would have been canceled, done. This would have been a wrap. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm 36 now, okay? 36. I you settled a bit. Pets to take care of. You're like, you're like that TikTok sound. Bitch, I'm a mother. I'm a mother. No drama. Every now I log in, I'm like, don't respond don't <laughs> like don't comment log off <laughs> for real but what's now great I, is- I call lola and tell her what my status would be i mean i have done that too i have written messages to other people and just like this is what i really want to write oh, like one of the <laughs> one of the oh, yeah, yeah, right i just don't I am, but I don't, I'm not responding to everybody. People don't know when to stop commenting. Everybody likes to pile on and don't know how to shut the fuck up. Everybody thinks they're hilarious and petty and witty, and it's not true. I know. I get it. <laughs> I get it. I get it. You were the one that you, you said something one time. You were just like, yo, sometimes I make a post and then I put it on private and y'all don't see it no more. <laughs> and I was just like, I, oh, shit. I was like, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> If it's too much comments, I'd be like, um, no, I'm muting everyone. No. <laughs> uh-uh. But yeah, it's been interesting because I definitely, you know, have noticed the ways that I've, you know, changed and grown. Like, I'm definitely not as popping off on the internet anymore, but I'm still popping off. Okay. Yes. Popping in and out. Because I, 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 I will say your, the words that you had said over the years still reign true to this day which is sad but it's nothing for i feel like you already have the the stock message and you can just go back on your 2015 post and share it again it is still relevant to this day what i said in 2015 yes i know you it wasn't cool to be on the internet a lot then. Everyone looked down on it and it was like, eh, you post too much. You every day, I'll be, be. we don't need to know about your personal life. And now look at you. Now look at everybody. They want us to watch their fucking banana bread on the internet. They want us to be there 24 hours a day. But where was you five, six years ago? You was hating, telling me to log off. It's true. Like people that were literally like so annoyed about how outspoken I was. Now they out here trying to get TikTok followers by being relatable. But she was untouchable. Which one is it? Because you you have been the realest. I'm not going to lie. To me, I'm going to let the audience know right now. Right now. To me, Jesus Louise has always been the realest motherfucker in the room. Thanks, Gigi. No, you really have. Like, and I think that's another reason why I gravitate to you because I'm like, I'm real. She's real. Let's be real together. Like, <laughs> a lot of like the thing that was used to be extremely disheartening would be like, you know, black performers or people that I looked up to were also trying to tell me to not do those things because of like, you know, my career or like people are watching, no one will want to work with you. Okay, bye, good day. I don't know, I'm still out here, so. And that's the thing, like the people who told you you'll never get work, you you working more than them. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, and like, it's very, I don't think people understand 
how um, emotionally draining it is to be that vulnerable and open. Because yes, even though I am, you know, out there, I'm still a sensitive person. I still have feelings and I still feel like, fuck, now that I said this, are people, you know, people look at me some type of way. Like at the end of the day, of course, I'm gonna move on and don't care. But it still does affect you when people are making fake Facebook accounts to tell you that you're a shitty person or like fake email accounts to tell you that you're racist and blah, blah, blah. Like Who that definitely time? got Shitty white people. They have nothing but time. Like who like, has all, the- like people used to troll me for real. And I'd be like, is this somebody that I'm working with tomorrow? Is this somebody that I'm going to be backstage with next week? I don't fucking know. Yeah. Yeah. So it was very, very scary. But I just was like, you know, whatever. If people are going to be some type of way about me talking about racism and problematic things, and I don't want to work with them anyway. And I'll find the people that do want to work with me. And that, this- yeah. And I, I think that's what shocks and scares uh, a good chunk of the white burlesque community is that we go, nah, we good. And then we'll go somewhere else where we are wanted and appreciated. And then, you know, yeah, we're just like, you have all white shows. And they're just like, well, I tried. And it's just like, yeah, but you were shitty and racist. So you didn't really try. (laughs) It's true. And it's also interesting, like, I always have to remind myself that we're all learning and growing in our own time, in our own ways. But sometimes it literally used to feel like a slap in the face if I like, if I was like, y'all, this is fucked up. And then five years later, some white person is like, y'all, this is fucked up. And everyone's like, I know. I'm like, okay. Okay. It's but like when you I just said, said it. But when I said it, I was rabble rouser problem maker well, but then when the, you I was like they're so right that's the 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 burden that we have of like when we speak up uh we speak up and then you know we're uh, we're not heard and then let somebody else say and like oh that's a great idea and I'm just like but I just said that and huh? you know it's one of those things where when I have and called I, it out okay. yeah go ahead I have a lot more understanding for like, because it also used to be very hurtful when like black and PLC people were like, yeah, I hear you, girl. I'm still going to apply to this and go to it because I need this opportunity. And it's like, that's what they want you to believe that like these events and these producers are like your big opportunity. It's the only way to be seen and get up the ladder and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no. Like, and I understand because there's not a lot of opportunities for black and brown people. I mean, there's more now, but it still would be like, it's hard that we're always the ones expected to give up the jobs and give up the opportunities, you know? So at the same time, it was like hurtful, but it was like, y'all got to get your bag too. But the same thing going to happen to you two years, three years down the line, you can be like, damn, same thing happened, you know? It, it, it's, it's like we're always the ones expecting opportunities yeah you know one of the things that you have also done for the community is create a space for black burlesque performers i'm going to reiterate that black burlesque black. performers geez louise has created black. this amazing production called jeezy's juke joints hey black experience is coming on the 10th year Mm -hmm. i can't believe there i should be there because it's the number 10 10. i should be there just let me know where to show if i gotta buy my own plane ticket just let me know just (laughs) yeah but 10 but you, I, I only heard about Jeezy's Juke Joint and heard how amazing it is. And it, 
you know, I always wanted to apply and I got always scared. Like, I'm not going to lie between there are so many productions out there where y'all would not even know I'm nervous to apply. Like I'm scared. Jesus Juke Joint is one of them. And I'm you thankful. Tripping. I know. I know. <laughs> Mind you, I didn't realize that I was, I could do Jesus Juke Joint until Jesus Louise came to me. And I don't know where we were, but I knew we were intoxicated. You went, so you're going to headline. <laughs> and that was like, what? What is going on? But yeah. Hey. And I was just like, I'm not that good. And you were like, you do things in the community and you're a good performer. You're, you're performing. <laughs> you're a headliner. Needed it. And I, was, yeah. But what I was going to say is you, it was a family reunion. It was a family uh -huh. reunion and that was the one that I had like in St. Louis and I lost like it was my birthday weekend. It was all just oh, great time. Birthday? It was lit. It was lit. You know, we were all drinking blackout in a can. Oh, that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was so fun. But it was I remember coming back home going no one like that experience dear goodness and so the next time you had jesus juke joint in chicago the promontory oh. i was just Ooh. like i'm getting the sports you mean yeah <laughs> i was like i'm getting vip tickets yes. to the <laughs> but i got vip tickets and that's when i got to be in the audience and not in the show and in the audience i saw how everyone was just like, this is Jeez Louise's house. This is her place. We are all guests and she is putting on an amazing show. I got to see Pinot Noir. That was my first time seeing Pinot Noir. Ready for that. There was so my thing is what made you, my question is what would led you to Jeezy's Juke Joint? Well, when I started performing in Chicago, there was maybe like six black burlesque performers, maybe probably less than that, actually. Um, and I had started traveling around more and meeting people here and there, but doing a lot of research, like I used to be a huge nerd about burlesque. I was like, I want to be the encyclopedia. I need to know everything everywhere, all the time, every town, city, I don't care. I need to know. And there just wasn't a lot of like information. Like I knew about Pro Noir. I found out about Foxy Tan and the Landmans. Then I found out about Harlem Shake and a lot of Boutte. And so I started my own little personal blog. It was called Jesus Juke Joint, a Black Burlesque blog that I just like interviewed people like Sydney Devereaux and all types of people. I just interviewed them about being Black and Burlesque. And the troupe I was in, was like hey we have a spot like if you want to make this a show and i had never produced anything before and yeah we just did one night we brought switch the boy wonder we had coco dupree foxy feline like pole dancers tap dancers rappers we had shea coulee made their burlesque or their drag debut at the very first jesus juke joint it was the first time anyone had ever seen shea coulee before and I thought I booked them to be the dancer in the opening and they sent the track and I was like, what's this track for boo boo? And they're like, my solo. I was like, what do you do? Like, what, what is it? They're like, oh, I think I'm gonna try and drag. I was like, okay, sure. Now look at them today. Now look at them today. And what's- now, World Superstar. So the first Jesus Juke Joint, like honestly felt like historic and iconic. And just since then, like we just made it a yearly festival and now we travel around uh, the country. But the thing that's most important to me about it is that blackness is not a monolith. There's not one way to be black. Like also you could just be black. You ain't gotta, the acts don't have to be about you being black. It's just about you being a black person doing your acts. Like, you know, and I think a lot of, especially in the early days, I remember somebody's critique was like, what does this have to do with African-American history? Sir, first of all, my <laughs> like, is turned what are, like, girl, my face was like, so stank. Like, what are you talking about? 
And that's when I realized that Black people need to be coming to this show. Like, I wanted to not just showcase Black people on stage, but how can we diversify our audience? And there was so many Black people, they like, one person was like, I've never seen pole dancing outside of a strip club. I've never seen a drag king before. Like, they just were like, we don't know what this is. We've never heard of this burlesque. Like, we don't know what it is. And it's blowing my mind because I was like, burlesque is around me every day. And so I couldn't believe that there was just people that didn't know it existed. And so like our goal is to bring burlesque to the black community and not just burlesque performers on stage, but the audience. Cause you know how awkward it is to have a black ass show and the only people in the audience are your white ass friends. No I know. offense, love. Thank no. you for buying. <laughs> Wait, say that to G's. You say thank you for buying the tickets. Thank you for buying the tickets. I need you to sit in the back. Like we can't, cause I used to have to make announcements. I was like, if you are white and you are buying VIP tickets, you need to give these tickets to black people or invite a black person because we're not gonna have the whole first two rows be only white people. But that's, so how, that's how I got my VIP tickets because you said that yes. and I had made a post. I was just like, I was about to buy the VIP tickets. And then next thing you know, you were like, this person contact Gigi, go buy her ticket. This person, so contact like, Gigi, go buy her ticket. Yeah. And so now, now that's like a thing that people like to do every year, which is great because it was like, we got to figure out how it's not. Because it's like, of course, I also want to make the tickets affordable so that Black and Brown people can buy them. Also, we got to make money. Okay. Can be tickets to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been an interesting journey because also, there used to be people, especially like men who would come with their wives who would like get up and leave or walk to the bar, the bathroom, if like Ray Gunn was performing or like a drag king, they just were like, man, what is this? But now over the years, like their eyes have been open and they've been trained to see like, this is not a threat. This has nothing to do with your sexuality. Black men are also allowed to express their sexuality. And that's why I don't want to have an all black show. There's only black women and black femmes like black men are not able to express their sexuality in the world, you know? Mm. Have that space for all genders and all types of blackness, you know? Like I know a lot of people, especially in the burlesque, black men can be a commodity, they can be a threat, you know? And so it's very important that that space is for them also. Yeah. But yeah. they know who's running the show. Okay. Yeah. No, they do know who's running the show. Yeah. They do know who's running the show. Yeah. But it's like, it's important for them to have a place to be vulnerable and expressive. You know what I mean? Yes. And I think that's what made me stay my eyes on Pinot Noir. Like, I've already seen Switch the Boy Wonder. And I was just like, Switch, you are yes. amazing. Like... <laughs> And then I saw Pinot Noir and I was just like, what the fuck is this? Because, you know, there was Trey to Mark and, you know, Trey's the baby. So I had never seen like, who's this, who's this person? And then after that, we all got to see Samson. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And then when you were supposed to have, when Samson was supposed to headline is when the world decided I to shut down. And we, <laughs> we, we getting them cheeks up on that stage, okay? Please. <laughs> But so yeah, it's been an interesting because there's so many intersections of like blackness, queerness, you know, and then the whole we ain't even touched on growing up in the church and being black and queer and a stripper and like all of that is an amalgamation and like comes into this like family reunion where we can have our shared lived experiences, but not with like a white gaze. Yes. Yes. I, I will admit you created a space that makes all of us feel open to say like, yeah, I was raised in a strike household, blah, 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 blah. And we also have the ability to be quoting black movies and black culture stuff to where we're not in a space. Gospel act and people in the audience are going to fucking understand and get it rather than be like, this is weird. Why is this happening? Right. Like, you know, I'm you can't, we can't put our acts everywhere. Correct. Correct. We can't do our acts everywhere. We can't even make the yeah. same jokes everywhere. 
Like exactly, especially as me, you know. Yeah, it it's it felt great to be backstage, and we're quoting lines from movies or doing some black ass stuff. Working that, on the wall, being loud. <laughs> yeah, and no one's going. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that is. What do you? Can you explain it to me? And we don't want to. We're just like you. We're the just girls, being. Get it. The girls who don't don't like. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's very interesting because it's taken me so long to get people to say Jeezy's Juke Joint, a Black Burly Q review. They constantly want to say POC, a POC show. And I'm like, no, you're erasing our Blackness. It's called Jeezy's Juke Joint, a Black Burly Q review. It's not called a POC review. It's called a Black review. Right. And people really have a hard time with that. <laughs> and and they're, they always are. You know, they forget that that B in BIPOC is huge as shit. It's the first one, B. Yeah. You know, when people mm -hmm. talk about POC issues, I'll be like, are we talking about POC issues or are we talking about black issues? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, like, are we, are we discussing it? And people are just like, what do you mean? I mean that. And I'm like, no, you don't. Cause my black ass life is different from a Latinx life mm -hmm. is different from an indigenous person's life is different from an Asian person's life. Yes, yes. we're all POC. And I had to what was that? Yeah, I had, to learn, I had to learn about the intersections because it used to be like, the byline used to be like African-American burlesque because it was 2009. We weren't using black as much, you know, but it was like, no, Black people aren't only African-American. We have Afro-Latina people. We have people from Europe, from Germany, like, you know? And so I had to change the wording because I felt like it was just very specific when Blackness is from all over the world. Yeah. I mean, we can call it African diaspora burlesque, but... <laughs> wordy. That's a lot. It's so <laughs> wordy. It doesn't roll off the tongue. But... for the poster. And I'm not like, are you black? Do you consider yourself black? Are you going out into the world saying that you're black? Because there's definitely been some people that I'm like, okay. Yeah. Okay. I can't oh you, I can't police anyone's blackness, but some people are definitely like, well, my grandfather. Okay, but are you black? Are you walking through the world as a black person? Yeah. Like, even if you're passing, are you black? And that's been interesting because some people I'm like, girl, you're a damn lie. You are a liar. <laughs> there are some people I, I've had to ask, like, they're a person of color. They black. Like, no idea. People are like, well, I'm like, they look Caucasian to me. Baby. Yeah. Like, you can be white passing and still live a black ass life. And that's the difference. Because I'm like, are you black? Are you going in the room and saying, hello, I'm a black person. I'm a black woman, you know? Yeah. yeah. Or like, I don't know. You know, it's hard. No, I know what you mean. Blackness, but it's also like, okay, well, yesterday <laughs> you were saying. <laughs> like, and there's, there's sometimes when, when, you know, when people, and I, I don't like doing this colorism thing, but I, when people are passing and they say, well, I'm black and I'm just like, take your light skin of tears somewhere else. Lived experience. Though. It's a lived experience. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we have all kinds of black people. Yeah. Sure. But a couple of you, yeah, I'm like, okay. Because I definitely do have light, bright ass friends who grew up bliggity black like me. <laughs> so where it's no question when people will be like, oh, what are they? I'm like, black. And there's some people who apply. I didn't even know they were black until they applied. I'm like, oh, I would have asked you. <laughs> but I didn't even know. Because I'm not <laughs> born. black. Hey, are you black? Are you black? Do you want like, you know? Are you black? But <laughs> the thing with Jeezy's Juke Joint, you making this beautiful black ass experience that I feel like you must get thousands of applications every time. A lot. And I feel shitty every time, especially because it's such a specific festival, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want any black person walking away feeling like they're not good enough or they don't have what it takes. But if you got a hundred applications, we only can have 30 people. 
I ain't got the money or time. We're going to be there for seven days. <laughs> seven day events. <laughs> seven day plus advent calendar. Like it's going to be long as hell. And so I always try to, you know, but there's some people that are just going to be like, they didn't get in the first time. They got me mad about it forever, which is also a heartbreaking and sad because there's people who applied three times and got in on the fourth time, you know? You just never know. Maybe there was already 12 purple fan dances. Yeah. Maybe um, someone was dancing to that Whitney Houston song. You know? Yeah. Maybe everybody did Old Town Road. We could only have one, you know? So, but it does, it's hard. It's very heartbreaking to, I hate like having to reject anyone. And I don't even like that word, like, cause it's not a rejection. It's just, is what it is. I have so many, so much room. Yeah. But yes, my question now is the Jeezy Juke Joint legacy. I don't know if you noticed that like a lot of black, bleakity black ass burlesque shows really took off. Like, because I know, I love it. So we saw, because remember, I was just like, I'm doing Chocolate Lounge. Yes. And the Chocolate Lounge. Okay, like the City Burlesque and Cabaret. Yeah. So how does that make you feel that like Jeezy Juke Joint ended up making this whole legacy? I love it because, you know, Jeezy's Juke Joint was also born out of the inspiration of people like Harlem Shake, Burlesque, and Foxy Tan and the Wham Bams, and all the troops, and Simone de la Ghetto, and all the troops and everyone that I found out about and was inspirational to me. And I think I love it. I'm like, there needs to be, have black ass shows every day. You know, more people could book me in one, but <laughs> just throwing, throwing it out there. Please. Don't be afraid to contact. Book G. Don't be afraid Louise. to say. Because <laughs> I have definitely contacted G's Louise and been like, y'all want you for the show, but I don't know if I can afford you. And she's just like, just book me. I will make a way. Yeah, I she's just like, just, Gigi, just book me. Just book me. Just <laughs> and the couch, okay? I will be there. <laughs> just book me. Because when you came to when you came to DC, I forgot where you were staying. I think you were staying in Columbia, Maryland. I was staying with uh, Dainty. Dainty. You were staying mm -hmm. in Dainty with Dainty. Mm -hmm. And I remember... I was just like, geez, could say with me, I live in the hood, okay? Jeez <laughs> will be fine. I live in the hood. And I understand that people try to give you like this beautiful thing. I was like, nah, like, Jeez just wants to walk down the street to 7 Eleven. She can't do that in that day. Okay, and find a blunt. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> I was literally like, For the hum. Yeah. This is not the homies, $1,000. It's not the homies. <laughs> not the homies. <laughs> One thousand dollars. Wait. Oh yeah, you did come home with a thousand dollars. It was like in a in a bag. I remember I you, like, took a, you took a nap on it on the plane. <laughs> I my bag of money. It was like a pillow. I was like, "This is my boyfriend now." <laughs> and like you, you being there, and it, even you taught a class, and we were we were shocked at the lack of people in our community in DC's community that didn't even show up for the class. We were shocked mm -hmm. to where, even when I brought Egypt Black Now for the DC Black Theater Festival, the people who came, came, the people who didn't, didn't. Yeah. But then mm -hmm. there are times when, you know, and it's not just DC, there are other, I've seen other states and oh. cities ask for it and say, I want a big name person. And then we bring it and then everyone's hemming and hawing, as my mama would say. Right. It's everyone's true. Hemming and hawing. So, yeah, I, I, like I said, I definitely wanted to bring you back to DC, but I was like, nah, they not acting right. They act right. <laughs> they act right. And I think it's very exciting that there's, especially a lot more POC shows and black events. Like, I think there can always be more is more is more is more, you know? And yeah. I don't think, I want to let people know there's nothing wrong with citing your inspirations. And this is not just about black burlesque, like burlesque in general. There's definitely, sometimes there's a little ego going on where people feel like they need to act like this idea came out of the blue 
and it was just they just made it up in their minds it's like there's nothing wrong with saying xyz this person really inspired me or i learned from this person or this is who helped me get my start or whatever even if they did help you and they were just an inspiration i feel like a lot of times some people don't want to say that nobody because everyone in school has trouble wait, citing their sources for a research paper yeah like it doesn't take away from any of your work but because of people like foxy tan and a lot of boute and all of that i and pearl noir like i'm able to have this inspiration to create something and i think it's important that we tell people that you know yes yes because i definitely have always said geez louise inspires me like, i've done people racing people from their bio real quick no you you i don't know why me just in general they ain't got not i'm not even talking about myself I'm just talking about in general like yeah. you would be it'd be like okay but we know you went to Susie von strip school of burlesque There's no, <laughs> wrong <with> that. <laughs> no that actually happened to someone someone removed me from their bio started saying that like they never work with me and apparently uh -huh. someone did call them out and say don't you fucking oh. lie. you know you went to studio holiday you know you learned under gg holiday there's nothing wrong with saying that you it was know like, it was a black performer who was just like i never learned under her and everyone uh, was just like you're a whole and away from your accomplishments or your hard work if anything it shows that i don't know just shows more that you've been researching and keeping one ear to the streets and knowing what's going on none of us have created this out of thin air that no one just woke up and was like you know what i'm gonna make a burlesque review <laughs> so different than anyone anything anyone's ever seen before it's like it's kind of okay. like what was that chick that said hip-hop and burlesque has never been combined before and we were all like <laughs> no that's I will just never crazy. forget when that chick said that we all were just I like no white people ran that into the ground at least six years ago six <laughs> At least six years ago. That is, that's a wrap. <laughs> We're done here. No more if I like the new classic, then the record scratch come on. Oh, time to work. We get it. <laughs> we get it. Wow. So original. <laughs> no. No, ma'am. I always I will always uh talk about hip hop and burlesque between that one chick who's like, this is the first time I'm combining it. And the other chick who did it on the b -Hoff stage to that performance. And when he leave on, he leave your ass for a white girl. Wink. I was just like, no. No. We were oh. like, I'm um, deaf. You and I were at b -Hoff when that one performer started rapping. <laughs> when we were in the lobby, we just made a face. We all we looked at each other. <laughs> eyes to each other where he was like, like no everyone in the lobby was like Ugh. i remember that whole moment because lola lay soleil would not look at me because i was trying to look <laughs> out the room and she was like i'm not looking at you she was like no, i'm not looking at you. Yeah. No, I'm, looking at you. <laughs> it's like, I'm gonna lose it if i look at you but i think we all had that deep negro spiritual moment of like do not look at each other do not engage <laughs> walk out we did. Oh, master. We did a, excuse me excuse me excuse me <laughs> uncle blunt to get through yeah, this. we were like excuse me meet me at the bar and i think we all did this <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah just meet me at the bar but you also finally got to host with your co your cohort lola vanella i have to learn how to say it right someone oh, is correcting me yes Y'all hosted Burlesque Hall of Fame two years yes. in a row. We did two years in a row. We waiting on number three, okay? That's Our number B hop or number still the same. Waiting <laughs> on that call. Burlesque Hall of Fame, the numbers. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, I'm back. You're back. No worries. Yeah. B hop, the number is still the same. <laughs> The email is still the same. We're just waiting on that call. So you it was so fun. Sunday night show. Yes. It was yeah, outside of our own events, I think 
that was probably one of the first times we got hired to MC together. So it was very exciting the, you, for not our own show. Yeah. And you all com- did something that I thought was very, very revolutionary. And now I'm just, again, I feel like y'all were ahead of the game, video and live. We were out here. Y'all were out there. Y'all combined video and live with your hosting with the performances and now look at us all trying to get our, our now everybody's like take <laughs> you right oh. i'm a savage that's all of us now <laughs> but I know, we just want to do year three so we can do the trilogy of videos wait repeat that again wrap up the trilogy. you want we want to do year three so we can wrap up our video trilogy. We just need to make one more BHOP video and then you ever have to see us again. True. And then you can hire Gigi <laughs> Holiday to Yes, exactly. Tell <laughs> everyone at BHOP in the most beautiful yeah. of ways. Well, one of the yeah, other things. things. Yeah. <laughs> Another question I wanted to ask you was you mentioned Shea Coule. And Shea Coule wow. is. Queen. 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 And what's interesting is that you were mentioned on the Read podcast when Shea Coulee was on there. Bitch, you know, I recorded that. I screen recorded that. I was like, I'm on the Read. <laughs> That's one of my favorite podcasts. And literally people were texting me like, Bitch, are you on the Read? Like, you were on the Read and I screamed. I was like, come on, friend. <laughs> but also, you have been on some things where people have written to me and thought that they were saying my name and it was you and it was you on Netflix. <laughs> That's hilarious. What was the name of the show again? I, I my... Easy. 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 Yes. On Netflix. Season. Season two. Season two. Episode seven. Episode seven. Yes. Season two. Episode seven. Netflix. The show is easy. And Jeez Louise talks about burlesque and there's a burlesque class and you see some of the people that we talked about on the screen. It's amazing. How was that experience? And why are you not back on the show? Bitch. <laughs> I'm like, y'all need to be writing these producers. Okay. Like where's the spinoff? People were like, we wanted more jeeps. And I was like, I know. And also they cut me from, they cut most of my stuff from the episode because they're like, we got to focus on the stars, the celebrity names. I was like, you okay. are the star. I was like, y'all better know about me. But it was surreal because I didn't know what to expect. And my friend Sam Bailey hooked me up with the writer and he we went to lunch and he just was like, oh, I want to do an episode about burlesque. I could tell you the first thing about it. I was like, right, white man. What we're not going to be doing <laughs> is you just making up whatever, you know? So he was very thorough. We talked on the phone like every day, for like an hour about like how burlesque is different in Chicago, like what it's like, what the life is like on stage, off stage. And I was very much like, you're not going to get all my information and then not put me in this bitch. Like <laughs> I was very nervous that they were going to like hire some actor to like play my life because that would have been fucked up it but I didn't fucked up. Know. so that was like so I show up to the set and they're like okay so just ask Jeezy some questions about her life action and I was like there is there a script there's no words like <laughs> there was no script it's all improv the whole thing and what? I just was just for like action and would just let the camera roll and they're just like we're just gonna edit it you know so it was why like let me make sure i know what i'm talking about like i want to embarrass myself on here this is my real life and then i was like so i'm not really acting i'm just being myself which was cool because they use my real name they use jeezy's juke joint i was like yeah it was nice that they didn't like change the names or anything and really put like who we are out there. The yeah. only thing like they had this comedian hosting, which that would never happen. <laughs> I'm about to say that would never happen. It is Jeez Louise in a robe. And 
yeah. sparkly <laughs> shoes or a a, 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 a silver Idiot. jumpsuit. That's yeah, uh, breathing hard. Yeah. Wow, that was what's that amazing coming up next. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, that, that was amazing. We have to keep on a time right. schedule, everyone. And let's go. Yeah. Fun because the girls, Kiersey and Jazz, the girls who starred in it, we spent a lot of time together. We had a little sleepover because they had never done burlesque. And I was like, oh, no, we're not. We're going to be getting this right. Like, I consulted with the costume person about, like, how things would come off, you know, got to help them choreograph their routines it was so fun and it was really sweet and right. they did i feel like they did the job of making it my actual words and life yeah and like it was a great episode i was mad there wasn't any more but I, as i but as i told you are, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know exist anymore i don't know i think after that they're like oh can't talk this. yeah no i don't think it exists anymore because i think they were supposed to film season three but uh -huh. season three never has been released. I don't know. I think that, yeah, I have no clue. But, but. I, I still want to uh, do television shows with you and movies. I still yes. remember saying uh, I want my drunk burlesque history. Yes, we need drunk burlesque history. How <laughs> a drunk burlesque history and a movie about a, a, someone finding out that grandma was a burlesque <laughs> dancer and now we're all taking her to Beehoff to meet the rest of her. <laughs> That's amazing. That's yeah, what I want. Cut and print. Hollywood, you heard it <laughs> first. Listen, geez, we, I can go on and on with you forever and I'm yeah, so we, glad. Hours, girl. <laughs> yeah, I know I got your number mm -hmm. and a bunch of other shit, but I, what else would you like the audience to know? This is your time to say like, this is what y'all need to know about me and my life and everything okay, okay. this is what i want y'all to know i'm just a hard-working mom trying to make a way for her and her son and by my son i mean my cat mr kathy <laughs> we're just and one of the things the other day samson knight was like what are you looking forward to most in 2022 and i said nothing which sounds dark but I think it's actually great because that means I'm not, I'm not overworking myself or planning my life to the T where I like every day is a dream and go, I need to fix this. So my whole year, like, of course there's things that I'm doing, but everything is kind of open, which I like, like, I don't really know what's going to happen. So everyone out there in TV land that's listening right now, book a bitch. Are you in Boise, Idaho? Bitch, I've never been there. Let's go. Do you have a janky strip club in Indiana? I'll go there. Like, I just want to have different and new experiences, basically for the story, for the book, for the memoir. I feel like this year coming up is going to be, the theme is do it for the book. You know? Are you saying doing it for the book? Because I've been pressured uh, and, and encouraged by a few people to start writing my book. Yeah, you got to start writing for the next 40 years. Yes, but not only that, let's get out what's out there now and let's profit uh, off of our book now because there's always going to be a part two. There are what, seven books in Harry Potter? Bitch, yep. there are probably seven books in my life. So Yeah, it's just part one. Jeez, you know? put it out there. Because yeah, I also want to know, does that blog, does that blog still exist? Girl, you know I done lost that damn website. It's I think it. Because I'm like, I want to read it. I want to read it and send it to BB Bardot so we can both be like doing book reports on it. There's a, yeah, there's a few videos on the YouTube channel I sent it to. I'm going to remind you, it was 2009, okay, then 11. The video is grainy and shit. We got it's it. It's on some Android, what? I don't know. It was probably on the flip phone or camcorder. I love it. So the, the quality, but the content is good. <laughs> and that's all we need is the content. Geez, where would you like people to find you? You see how I say that? Because some people don't want to be found. Where Thank would you, you like people to find you? 
I need everyone to follow me on TikTok so I can reclaim my rightful spot as number one next year. I feel like if I could just get 50,000 TikTok followers, I feel like I could really push myself back into number one. So follow me on TikTok, okay? You can try to follow me on Instagram. I'm shadow banned. They don't want you to know. The conservatives don't want you to know what's going on over there. So you could try to find me on Instagram, but I don't know. Good luck to you. <laughs> well, you heard it. Book a bitch. Book a bitch. Follow a bitch on TikTok. Hit me up at booking at gslouise.me. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Number three yeah. in the world. Number one in every <laughs> motherfucker's heart. And number one on every racist hit list, but we don't give a fuck. <laughs> Absolutely. Because <laughs> because guess what? I share that spot with her too. Number one, Damn. bitch. Fuck out of here. Like, <laughs> please. Geez, it has been a pleasure. I cannot wait to see you at the Dirty Show in February. We're going to be this having a good great day. I'm excited. First podcast of the year. Really? Yes. I'm yeah. waiting for people to interview me now, since now that I'm number 10. Oh, I'll um, interview you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. I'll interview Ooh, me. Let's do it over during the weekend. Yes. Yeah, the weekend. Yes. Because yeah. it is, I'm, I'm thankful and I'm honored. And I also just want to say thank you for telling me years ago that I always voted for you, Gigi, to be on that top 50. Always. Oh, you were just like, I always voted for you. And thank you for last year where you were just like, you got in the camera and said, y'all just put Gigi on the <laughs> list. I have that screen recorded of you and Tito Benito getting mad. Like y'all uh, just put it on the screen. <laughs> I was just like, geez knows who I am. Poison Ivory knows who I am. Like, <laughs> let people know. Not. Like I said, you, you are a pillar in this community. You are beautiful. You are a ray of sunshine. And I love that you have opinions and thoughts and words, and you do not shy away from saying them. Thank you, Gigi. I really appreciate all your support. Just want everybody to know I'm out here for the people, always for the people. Yes. And that's just, I, you live your life as well. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. I do. I'm, I'm out here support it eh, eh, eh. well oh. thank you all everyone say goodbye to g's you will see her on the interwebs especially on tiktok yeah, see, you at TikTok. <laughs> see you on tiktok <laughs> see you on tiktok g's say goodbye to our lovely audience bye lovely audience i hope you enjoyed the sound of my voice yes <laughs> and we'll see you all later here is your auntie's tip of the week the sun is shining and you want your skin to be popping. Better put some sunblock on no matter what. Rain or shine, let's keep that skin divine. Thanks for listening, everyone. This episode has been a production with Period Podcast Network. Find out more on Instagram at Period Podcast Network. Be sure to follow us on Instagram too at Yes, a Stripper Podcast. And you can find us on Twitter at Yes, a Stripper Pod. Please like, subscribe, and rate Yes, a Stripper Podcast here on YouTube. See you next week.